okay let's get started so welcome you all to the live session 8 to the course manufacturing process technology first and second so in this uh, session we are going to solve some practice assignment problems based on the video lectures of week 8 so let's get started so uh, this is the first question so first of all please try it by yourself you can give your response in the chat box after that we will discuss it together Okay. yes yes uh, you are right so let's quickly discuss it and uh, discuss it for everyone so in this question it has been asked precision machining caters what limit of machining accuracy so uh, if you have gone through the lecture you might have seen this machining accuracy diagram has been given by Tani in 1993 basically he basically from this diagram uh, he has tried to uh, divide the manufacturing uh, machining accuracy for the different manufacturing process processes so if you can see so this first curve is for the normal machining this is for the normal machining and the second curve which is there it is for the precision machining and after that there is ultra precision machining so on the y-axis we have machining accuracy and here here there is a list of all the processes which uh, basically this process can achieve the accuracy level up to the here so based on that if you see the question it has been asked about the precision machining so from where precision machining starts precision machining means this line and if you see comes in this region so that is from 1 micron to 0 0.1 0 0.1 micron near in this region so the correct answer for this is P so, so any of you have doubt Is it clear? If any of you have doubt, please feel free to ask me. Yes. So basically, uh, what what does it mean if you are talking that that the accuracy of the machining in the precision machining is zero point one two one micrometer? What does it means? It means suppose we have to manufacture a shaft let's say this is the shaft which has the let's say diameter of uh, 10 mm it has a diameter of 10 mm so if if this shaft has been manufactured by the machine tools which comes under the precision machining like uh, precision grinding and turning machines if this shaft has been made by these machine tools then the maximum possibility of error in the dimension is that is from 0 0.1 micrometer to 1 micrometer okay so the correct answer for this problem is b shall i move to the next problem
any of you have any doubt okay if there is no doubt then we can move to the next problem please uh, read the problem and you can give your response in the chat box I have got one response. I'm waiting for others. Others, can you please quickly give your response in the chat box? Okay. Okay, so uh, is all of you are correct? So here this problem is all about iron beam machining. So it has been asked what is the minimum machining accuracy we can achieve by iron beam machining. So I will quickly show you the uh, process of the INB machining and how it is different from uh, other machining processes so I will I will like to draw a diagram so suppose we have a workpiece like this and we want we want to make some hole let's say which uh, very accurate hole if you want to make some accurate hole or any contour which should have very high accuracy that is up to the uh, one nanometer so what what if you go with the conventional machining definitely we are not able to achieve there even in we have saw in the previous problem if you go for the precision machining also there also the accuracy which we can get is near about uh, 0.1 microns but here if you want much more accuracy if you want to manufacture a thing which should be very very precise up to the uh, uh, 10th of the atomic level so in that case we have to go for the process that is called iron beam machining or iron milling so what happens in this process so in this process basically suppose this is our work piece and we have a source of iron beam so what does this iron beam produce this is the iron beam column so it produces that it produces ions at high velocity or we can say if it is at high velocity then it must have high energy as well as the high momentum so what does it do i will try to exaggerate this portion so uh, what we have we have high energy ions which is moving towards the workpiece and now i will show in it will be uh, I will exaggerate a diagram suppose these are the atoms these are the atoms of the workpiece these are the workpiece atoms okay this workpiece and I will show the ions with different colors and these are the 
high velocity ions which are coming towards the workpiece. These are moving at high velocity. Spin. These, if you if you see, uh, you know, Amit, can you mute yourself? Amit. Amit, can you read news? Mute yourself. Yeah, thank you, Amit. Yes, so here uh, I am showing the exaggerated view of uh, work piece and ion interaction. So these green ones are the ions and the red ones are the, are the these are the atoms. So they are coming with the high, high, high energy. They are having the high energy. And when they strikes what will happen because of collision momentum transfer will happen as well as energy transfer will also happen and suppose if the energy which has been transferred by the ion to the uh, atoms of the workpiece if it is greater than the binding energy what is the binding energy binding energy means the bond energy between the two atoms of the workpiece atom so if energy which has been transferred by the ions to the workpiece atom if it is greater than binding energy of the workpiece atoms then uh, then this workpiece atom will knock it will get knocked out it will it will come out from its position and and that area will become vacant so what is the condition if kinetic energy transferred transferred by high energy ions to atoms of the workpiece is greater than the binding energy Contain what piece then the then the atom and then the work piece atom will knock knock away and what we can say we can say material removal has been taken place and finally machining has taken place so how will it looks like suppose uh, after few collisions what will happen this will look like something like this we can see the atoms of the workpiece in this region has been removed because of the collision and that this process is called sputtering I mean, uh, whether my screen is visible to others because Hamid is having some problem. So whether others others can see my screen. Uh, 
एन वन ओके सो हमें इट माइट बी सम इंटरनेट कनेक्शन फ्रॉम योर साइड सो यू कैन डिसकनेक्ट एंड यू कैन रिकनेक्ट बिकॉज अदर्स अदर्स कैन सी माई स्क्रीन ओके सो वी विल डिसम सो द प्रोसेस ऑफ नॉकिंग आउट ऑफ एटम बाय द मीन्स ऑफ ट्रांसफर ऑफ कैनेटिक एनर्जी टू द वर्क पीस एटम दिस प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड स्पटरिंग प्रोसेस सो दैट इज द ब्यूटी ऑफ द आयन बीम मिलिंग और आयन बीम मशीनिंग सो हियर इफ यू सी how how we are able to achieve that much good accuracy it is because the material removal has been taking place by atom by atom so oh, atom by atom uh, atom atom by atom it is getting knock, knocked out basically atoms is getting knocked out from the high energy ions so, therefore the accuracy which we are getting that is very close to the atomic distance so if you know the what is the size of typical atom then suppose this is the atom then the order of its diameter is typically its angstrom okay or 10 to the power minus 10 meters and so we are removing atom by atom we are removing the material atom by atom that's why we are getting the very good uh, machining accuracy that is near about 10 to the power 9 minus 9 meters or 1 nanometer okay so this kind of accuracy is required few sophisticated places uh if you know uh, about the transmission electrode mic microscopy there uh, there we need to prepare very thin sample basically how if you closely see a sample of transmission electrode microscopy then basically if you see from the top the sample sample will look like disk and uh, this disk is ne near about 3 mm its diameter is but in between there is a very fine hole so this hole is very fine it's in the nanomet nanometric range so that kind of hole can be made only with the help of iron machining or iron milling so the correct answer for this problem is this 1 nanometer so this this should be not comes twice okay so is it clear to everyone anyone any of you have any doubt shall i move to the next problem okay it seems there is no doubt so i am moving to the next problem meanwhile if any of you find any difficulty hamid you have some doubt hamid do you have any doubt okay yes Yes, please uh, you can ask me by unmuting yourself or you can write in the chat box
the correct option is C I have marked is that your doubt or something else okay okay so let's move to the next problem Please read the problem and then you can give your response in the chat box. Okay, I have got one response, I'm waiting for others. Okay, others. Others, if you are facing difficulty to understand the problem, you can let me know. Yes, Praveen, I have got your response. I'm waiting for uh, others because I have got only two response. So maybe others are trying. Okay. So let's guess. Let's start discussing the problem. Which of the following? mechanical abrasion process utilizes abrasives uh, sorry loose abrasives so here a term is used that is the loose abrasives so here there are some process which has been listed down honing process grinding process sewing process and buffing process so uh, I will first uh, I will first tell you what is the abrasive machining so uh, abrasives are nothing they are the hard particles okay if you remember what is the machining machining means we our aim is to remove the material in order to achieve in order to achieve good dimensional accuracy in the surface finish so so uh, in order to do that we we are using some tool and we are trying to remove some material from the workpiece with the help of the tool so if you remember this was the suppose we have this kind of workpiece and we want to try we want to remove some material from it then this is the tool and with the help of with the relative movement between the tool and the workpiece we are trying to remove we are trying to machine the workpiece this is the workpiece machining means what removal of material removal of material to achieve damage good good dimensional accuracy good dimensional accuracy and surface finish So earlier we have seen that there was a tool and there was a workpiece and there was a relative mo movement between the tool and the workpiece and because of which because of the interaction of tool and the workpiece the material was getting removed. So 
देयर वी वर यूजिंग ओनली वन टूल टू रिमूव द मटेरियल नाउ इन ऑर्डर टू गेट द गुड सरफेस फिनिश देर आर देर आर मेनी प्रोसेस वेयर वी आर ट्राइंग टू मशीन द मटेरियल विथ सच स्मॉल विच विथ मेनी सच स्मॉल टूल्स सो सपोज दिस इज अ वर्क पीस and now we are we want this is the this is the top surface and we want good surface finish so if you see the surface finish is poor because of these asperities and if you see the size of this asperity this is this is micro size asperities and this can be removed only by help of small small such tools okay so this then that basically we can remove this small layer of asperities with the help of small if the tool size is also in the same range then only this kind of asperities can be removed and then only we will able to get the good surface finish so how that much small tool is made so the suppose we are having you have seen the grinding wheel so grinding wheel is nothing if you see the surface of the grinding wheel like here 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 we are having very small small abrasive particles abrasive particles are nothing but hard particles okay this is the grinding wheel okay so now what we did we made a wheel or oh, and we we bonded small small abrasive particles or we bonded small small cutting tools on the surface of the wheel and now if if we rotate the tool at high velocity over the surface then these abrasive particles will remove these small asperities and finally we will get a component with good surface finish here we has poor surface finish and after the grinding process we will get the good surface finish so it is a just an example of that abrasive machining so there are many processes so i will try i want to show you a video of the honing process basically we want to finish the this hole okay now we have a honing tool this is the honing tool and from this honing tool we are trying to finish the in its 
inner surface of the hole. So if you see uh, how the honing tool looks like. So there are these there are the honing sticks and finally you will find the surface finish something like this so if you see how the honing tool looks like so it is nothing but suppose I should I should use some another slide okay suppose uh, we have made a hole with a drilling machine okay suppose we have the workpiece and we have made hole from the drill bit okay so if after making the hole from the drill bit you if you if you see closely then the surface finish of the hole is not good with the help of the drill bit so in order to finish the surface finish of the hole in order to get a very uh, accurate dimension of the hole we we use honing process so how how the honing tool looks like basically there is a it it is also it has also has the shape of cylindrical but there are many abrasive sticks so these are abrasive sticks or honing sticks these are attached with the, this rotating this rotating tool and what is how abrasive sticks looks like so in the abrasive sticks small small size of abrasive particles are bonded on the surface of the abrasive sticks and and these are adjustable basically if you this diameter or the diameter of these sticks they are adjustable there is a feed mechanism so this diameter can be adjusted so when these honing sticks comes in the hole and it removes the small small asperities and finally we will get a hole with good surface finish surface finish so that is the, uh, the that is the use of the honing process it is used for finishing the hole and grinding already I have uh, explained earlier that we had wheel abrasive wheels which is rotating and with the help of abrasive wheels we are trying to remove the expertise of the surface in order to get good flat surface finish okay so that is the grinding process sewing process is not a finishing process it is the cutting operation suppose if we have a big rod and we want to cut it into two parts okay then what we do we 
we use sawing we use a saw if you, you it is you are already aware of the saw how it looks like okay. so with the help of saw we cut this big work piece into two small pieces so this is this is used for the cutting process so there are many types of saw hacks or bent saw so based on the requirement and the size of the work piece uh, we use different size of saw to cut cut the work piece so sawing is not a finishing process it is the cutting process and now coming to the buffing so first of all i want to show you a video Okay, let me remove. Oh, wait. This is the buffing process. It is, it is a surface finishing process. The aim of this process is to clean the surface to clean the oxide layer and aesthetically the surface should look shiny so you can see after the buffing process the surface becomes very smooth and shiny so this is the finishing process but in buffing process it is little different from the earlier uh, earlier abrasive based process so i will i will show you the diagram so in the buffing process it is uh, also very similar to the grinding process the only difference is here the abrasive particles are not fixed they are not bonded with the buffing wheel so here this is the buffing wheel and we have work piece like this so this is the made up of cloth so this is the type of uh, cloth this wheel is made up of cloth and what we do we put some loose abrasive paste on the work piece or we we can put the loose abrasive paste on the wheel also and then we will rotate it over the surface finish and uh, so over the surface of the work, work piece in order to clean it and make it shinier so here the abrasive was not permanently attached with the buffing wheel they were we applied it separately in the form of paste here machining in the buffing process machining also takes place with the help of abrasive but they were not fixed therefore they are called this process is called the machining with the loose abrasives therefore the correct answer for this problem is D so is it clear or still there is some doubt any of you have any doubt please let me know okay it seems there is no doubt we will move to the next problem please read this problem 
and you can keep your response in the chat box So AFM here, it is a short form of atomic force microscopy. Please read the problem and you can give your response in the chat box. After that, we will discuss it together. Can you see the problem number four? Because I haven't received any response in the chat box till now. If the problem is visible to all of you. Anyone, can you please acknowledge in the chat box whether you can see the problem? Okay. I am waiting for others because I have received only one response. So I am waiting for others. Shall I start discussing the solution? Hello. All of you can okay so uh, in this week uh, this was all about the uh, micro machine got producing the some sophisticated components for the men's industries or uh, some um, micro components so for that we have studied the several processes so one of the why we need a kind of micro component so one of the example is the atomic force microscopy so uh, as the name suggests there is something which is related to the microscopy in the microscope what is our what is our aim we try to see the surface we try to see the small regions of the of the any material so we want to see the miniature features so in the optical microscope we can see the uh, we can see the features which are of size let's say in the micron regions uh, but if you want to see the features which are in the which are in the nanometric range so for that optical microscope cannot be used so there we have to go for the electron microscopic techniques and uh, there is a, a technique which is called the atomic force microscopy it is used to do uh, 
it is used to find out the morphology of a surface at the atomic level so we can realize we cannot see but we can realize the how the surface morphology is based on the atomic forces so how how what happens in this process so i will try to show you so if you see any surface it is always made up of atoms okay something like that so it is a typical surface of a material okay so but we cannot able to see this kind of image with the help of optic uh, any microscope whether it is optical or scanning electron mi microscope or it can be transmission electron microscope we cannot see this kind of image so how how we will come to know how what is the exact surface morphology is so there is a technique that is called the atomic force microscopy in this process what happens first i will show first i will explain you the construction then i will explain how it works okay so in the atomic force microscope microscopy we have a cantilever beam okay this is a cantilever beam and there is a sharp tip it is attached with the cantilever beam so if you closely see the tip this here in this reason this tip has only it it has only let's say one or two two atoms it is that much sharp one to two atom sharp so this much sharp tip v tip is attached with the cantilever and why this much sharp tip we have made think it is because if the tip it is not that much sharp then it cannot it cannot able to sense it if if it cannot able to sense the atomic level changes atomic level change in forces so let's see in this diagram if you remember in earlier earlier part of the course we have been taught if we have two atoms like this they have been separated by some distance d and based on this separation this distance there is a change in force between them okay so that's what drawn here so this is the distance and here we are getting the force so if two atoms are very far okay if they are very far 
then the force between them is almost zero like here okay here this is larger distance we can say this is the larger distance if two distance if two atoms are very far then they will not feel any kind of force if they are too close okay this reason then they feel repulsion force okay so you can see here this region if force is here positive force means repulsion and negative force means attraction okay if you see if you bring the two atoms much more closer then there will be a repulsion force between them and if the the distance between is between them is not very far not very close then there a kind there is a kind of attraction force between them okay these all the regions of negative forces negative means attraction forces so if we want to sense what is the force between the two atoms then we have to make the this tip very sharp near about one one atom so suppose here we have tip it is if its diameter is also close to the one atom then if we move over it like this okay if we move this cantilever beam in this direction then only this tip will able to experience the force between each atoms suppose if tip size was too big like here okay if tip size was like this do you think if we move from here to here will able to sense this valley no it is not possible so since we want to realize the surface we want to experience the force between the individual atoms therefore we have to make the tip very sharp it is it also has dimension comparable to the one atom size okay so this was the construction of the probe this is called the probe probe of the atomic force microscopy now what happens when this is the cantilever beam when we move this beam on the surface then based on the atomic forces this beam will deflect so if the force is higher then beam will deflect upwards and if force is attractive then beam will deflect downwards okay so what we are doing we are trying to measure the force very near to the all atoms and based on the force we are converting the force into a image so based on the force data we are creating a artificial image so and that force we are measuring with the help of this deflection of the tip you know you might have read you might have studied in your solid mechanics course 
so how much force you are going to apply here that much of deflection of this that much of deflection of this beam will happen okay so based on the beam deflection now we are measuring the force and how this deflection of beam is measured by this laser okay if beam if this tip will move up and down then this laser will point sometime here sometime here sometime here so based on the tip deflection this laser beam this laser beam will point at different different locations and that's how we are measuring the deflection of tip we are measuring the deflection of tip and we are converting it into the force and from the force we are plotting the surface morphology we are plotting the surface at atomic level so that is called atomic force microscopy so this kind of cantilever beam and tip these are manufactured with the help of the techniques which 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 has been taught in in the week eight lectures okay so the correct answer for this problem is the cantilever tip so this is this is the application of the processes which we have studied in like lithography and there are many 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 very many versions of lithography we have studied photolithography so this those processes are used to make this kind of sophisticated instruments okay so the correct answer is cantilever beam or cantilever tip so is it clear or still there is some doubt regarding the atomic force microscopy is it clear shall i move to the next problem or you need clarification okay since there is no doubt so i am going to move to the next problem but later on still if you feel any difficulty you can ask me please read the problem 5 and try to give your response in the chat box yes all of you are correct so surface micro machining so you what we have studied the uh, micro machining process like in the two forms like the bulk micro machining or the surface micro machining so here i am showing with the schematics so here the first one first part is here this is the bulk micro machining and this is the surface micro machining here uh, if you see earlier we had some subtract like this and with the in the bulk micro machining we are trying to remove some material in order to get the final component so we have such initially substrate it was like that and finally we want some shape like it may be either this or something something like this like this so from here to here how we can get what we are doing we are removing some material from the substrate so, or what 
what we are doing we are removing some volume of the material from the substrate and that is called the bulk machining but if you see if you want to make something which is not uh, bulk it has a we want something which is very thin so we can say if you want some thin film something like this very thin film what do you think it is will it be void will it be voice decision to take this much of substrate and remove all the materials except this one so if if we will remove these all this material then also we will get this but that is not a voice decision it is wastage of energy and time as well as the resources so for that what we do so we can go for the deposition of the material rather than the removal of the material so that has been shown here so earlier we had a substrate of silicon silicon and then there is a sacrificial layer sacrificial layer means this is a temporary layer which we are making just to keep the support we have made the sacrificial layer because we want to deposit some material over it and finally we want to remove the sacrificial layer so we put the sacrificial layer and over the sacrificial layer we deposited the material so there are many deposition techniques chemical deposit chemical vapor deposition physical vapor deposition so after that after depositing the required shape of the material we want to remove this sacrificial layer we don't want sacrificial layer in our final component for that what we do we we put some chemical which will dissolve the sacrificial layer and finally we will left with this kind of final component so what is this it is nothing but what we can call it surface we have created a thin film or surface so surface micro machining is nothing but it is a it is a additive process so surface micro machining we are getting by the add, add, adding the material not by removing the material <laughs> So correct answer is the additive process. So is it clear to everyone or still there is some doubt? And most of you have given the answer to B, but that was true for the uh, bulk micro machining. So now it's clear why the correct answer will be the additive process. Is it clear or you need some clarification? Okay, but since there is no doubt, so we will move to the next problem. Okay, so please read the problem and uh, you can keep your response in the chat box. After that, we will discuss it together.
I am waiting for others. Whether uh, question is clear to all of you or there is some doubt. If you need any clarification regarding the question, please ask me. Otherwise, you can give your response in the chat box. Okay, so uh, let me help you out. So, explain about agent powder. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the problem. So here it is: physical dry etching utilize which of the following agent material okay so there are many terms here one is the physical one is the dry one is the etching and here agent okay so let's first of all try to understand what etching process is so you uh, we know that we are studying the micro machining process and wherever the word machining is coming it means removal of material has been taking place so machining means machining means nothing but removal of material Let me use the next slide to explain. Removal of material. And micro machining means micro machining is nothing removal of material at micron level or small amount a very small amount of material is being removed of material in very small quantity so this is required to produce the features which has uh, which which has dimension in the microns or less than a micron so suppose we have we want to make something like this okay here suppose this is the 10 micron thick silicon material is you know in semiconductor material in semiconductor industry the majority of components are made up from the silicon whatever chips or processors or the storage device solid state device whatever you see all are made up by the micro machining processes photolithography processes so uh, there we are creating very small small features like this okay so if you are aware of little bit about the electronics then everything uh, in everything in electronics industry is uh, done or an or it is understood in terms of zero and one zero and one so basically all the computer all the mobile software everything runs on the in the binary languages okay so this zero and ones if you see for one gigabyte storage then there are millions of zero and ones that has been created okay so 
symbolically if you want to say if we have peak something like this that is called one and if it is valley we call it zero if it is one so same similarly uh, if you see the processor then there are millions of transistors inside a processor if you see a typical computer processor it is just one inch longer and one inch wider only let's say five millimeter five millimeter thick within this much small size if we want to incorporate millions of transistor then you can think of the what is the size of each, each transistor and how that is made that is made by the techniques which we are learning here okay so i was telling this micro machining so initially we had some so we want to produce this from this okay so initially we have plain 10 micrometer thickness silicon wafer okay and now we want to create this is let's say 2 micron depth so we are creating some valley of depth let's say 2 micron so this kind of small and complicated features can be produced only with the processes with the help of micro machining so out of that a process it is called etching okay etching etching so etching is the process with the help of this we are trying to remove very small quantity of material in selected area and there are several types of etching first is the wet etching and second is the dry etching okay so in the wet etching we are trying to remove the material with the help of some liquid chemical okay so as the name suggests wet wet means liquid so suppose uh, what we did we applied some masking material over here over here okay we applied some masking material over here and we poured a chemical over here okay some chemical we have poured but what this chemical does this chemical react with our substrate material but not with the masking material so it will come here and it will react with the substrate okay but it will not able to react with the green or the masking material okay so what it is it will go and it will react and after reacting it will remove the reacted portion of the substrate material this so it will go it will react and after reacting it will create it will create something like this okay due to due to liquid chemical this kind of reaction has taken place and finally we are we are left with this okay so now this is the feature which we are looking for but right now 
we have some some layer which is not desirable okay so we remove this layer so this layer we remove and finally we will get this component so this kind this here this material has been removed with the help of chemical reactions with the help of chemical reaction of a chemical the chemical is called agent and the process is called etching so micro machining has been done by the material removal by the chemical which is in the liquid state that is called the wet etching okay so for silicon some of the example some some agent i will tell you like hf hf hno3 or koh so these are the some examples of the chemical agent they are used in the dry they are used in the liquid form so this was the wet etching now let's come to the dry etching okay so within dry etching there are two types one is the physical dry etching and another is chemical dry etching okay so one thing we understood in etching process we are we are just removing the material if material has been removed by the liquid chemicals we called it wet etching now if the material has been removed with the help of some processes where we where we does, it doesn't involve any chemical like if we go for the if we are removing the material suppose we have initial material something like this silicon wafer okay and now with the help of electron beam okay electron beam will come it will melt the material and with the help of electron beam also we can remove a small amount of material and we can get this it may be iron beam electron beam anything it can be or photons like lasers okay so there so we can use these sources also to remove the material at the micro micro level okay so if we use this kind of processes to create or to remove a small amount of material that is called the physical dry etching okay so some examples like physical spot ring plasma etching or let's say reaction ion etching so in all these processes we are removing the material with the help of ion electrons or photons but we are not using any chemicals so there is third category also that is called the chemical dry etching in chemical dry etching again we are using chemicals to remove the small amount of material okay but now the chemical is not in the liquid form it is in the gaseous form therefore we are calling it dry etching okay so so here what we do we have substrate 
and we bring the we again put some mask over it we put mask okay and now we bring some gaseous agent okay this now the chemical is in the form of gases not in the form of liquid and again it is reacting with the material and finally it is producing this component okay so that is gaseous chemical agent okay so for example for silicon uh, it, it is boron tetrachloride or bcl3 or chlorine so these are this can be used in gaseous form as a agent okay so these are the uh, categorization of the etching process so wet etching dry etching and there are two types of dry etching physical dry etching and chemical dry etching okay so here these are the few examples of the physical dry etching what is the physical sputtering okay here high energy ions are coming high energy plasma ions is coming and it is hitting the atoms and atom is getting away that is sputtering and here if we have plasma etching here plasma we are creating the plasma and it is coming it is reacting it is reacting with the uh, substrate material and because of the high energy and momentum it is going away and similarly we have reactive ion etching so now let's come to the question it is talking about the physical dry etching okay so now can you keep the answer please after explaining this much i expect you can give give the answer now yes others if you have understood please give your response in the chat box okay very good so the correct answer is c any of you have any doubt is it clear okay if it is clear so we'll move to the and next problem and still if you have any doubt you can uh, ask me okay okay please uh, read the problem and first try it by yourself and then we will discuss it together Okay, I have I have got response few response I am waiting for others okay so uh, let's start discussing this problem so which of the following photoresist presents the feature of dissolving away when 
directly exposed by UV light. Okay. Let's start looking the process and uh, for which process we are talking about. So we are uh, talking about the photolithography. Photo lithography. So it is it is one of the technique for the creating the micro micro features or the nano features so photolithography it is also a micro machining process so so suppose uh, as we are talking about the semiconductor industry so suppose we have some silicon wafer like this okay and now we want to create some feature over this silicon wafer so how we will do that so let's start looking this so initially we have substrate this is substrate okay and over the substrate we apply a photoresist material okay photoresist is nothing photo resist photoresist they are the materials which which reacts with the with the light it may be ultra violet light or it may be visible light so there they change their property or we can say they they react with they react with photons okay so over the substrate we applied a photoresist material okay now we we already have some mask masking material okay so we have we are using some masking material because suppose uh, if we want to create some pattern like this okay so definitely we should use some kind of mask material which should we should be like this okay so and from here we have a light source or photon source and this will go here here everywhere okay so the same thing has been shown here so over the photo resist we applied some mask material what is the task of the mask material mask material will just allow some selective regions to get exposed into the light or photons or it allows some selected regions to get exposed by photons okay so if you see in this example so these are the regions from these two areas 
light can enter so if light will enter from only these two areas so definitely it will react only these portions of the photoresist material we know photoresist material will react with the light and we want only this reason to get reacted that's why we put mask and after exposing this area to the light the property of reacted area will get changed okay so the portion of photoresist material which will get exposed with the uh, light ultraviolet ultra rays its property will get changed okay so based on the change in properties the photoresist material has been categorized into two types okay so these are two types first one is the positive photoresist okay and second one is negative photoresist okay so after reaction we will apply a developer developer is nothing it is a some chemical okay okay we apply some chemical so that if so that it will react this developer will either react with the exposed region of the photoresist or it may react with the unexposed region of the photoresist okay so what we did we applied developer chemical and if the photoresist is positive photoresist then developer will react with the reacted portion of the photoresist okay so if developer will react with the this this region of the photoresist which which was exposed in the ultraviolet rays then that type of photoresist is called positive photoresist and if opposite happens if this developer material if it will react with non exposed region of the photoresist of the material okay basically what is what developer is doing it is dissolving the either re, either exposed region of the photoresist or non exposed region of the photoresist so in in negative case the developer will dissolve non reacted or non exposed region of the photoresist okay so we will get in the case of negative photoresist developer has removed this much of this much of material of the photoresist which was not exposed whereas earlier case it has dissolved the exposed region of the photoresist okay so now let's come to the problem if you have understood this much now probably you can answer the problem okay so here it has been asking about which of the following photoresist presents the feature of dissolving away directly exposed by uv light so what we can see in this region the developer has dissolved the exposed region and that is called the positive photo photoresist okay so the correct answer is this is it correct so uh, whether uh, all of you have understood or still there is some doubt
is it clear if you have any doubt please uh, ask me is it clear okay so if there is no doubt we will move to the next problem okay please uh, read the problem and uh, you can first of all you can try it by yourself after that we will discuss it together you are finding difficulty to understand the problem you can ask me okay others So and this is a straightforward question from the uh, lecture slides, but uh, I will uh, I want to explain you means uh, what is the meaning and why it is important. Okay, so yes, so most uh, so all of you are correct. The correct answer is D. The correct answer is D. But uh, let's try to understand. Uh, what is the resolution so basically here it has been asked the resolution B of lithography is given by some formula where lambda and s are the wavelength and distance between the mask and wafer so if you remember this earlier slide this slide so what we have done here just focus here okay i will draw the same diagram in the next figure so so we had substrate or silicon and we want to create some features in this substrate okay so what we did we took the substrate and if you see the size size is very small let's say 10 micron just for example and here we want to make a valley of let's say 2 micron just for example I am taking these numbers so what we did we took the substrate material and we applied some photoresist over it okay this is the photoresist And after that what we did we applied some mask over it it is mask it is photoresist here we have substrate <coughs> and 
what we did we exposed all regions with the ultraviolet rays sorry <laughs> so here a term has been used that is called the resolution that has been denoted by b resolution b so resolution is nothing but it is the minimum distance over two differently placed placed object can be distinguished without interchanging each other's domain without interfering each other's domain okay so if you see the dimensions of feature which we are looking for it is let's say it is 5 micrometer and its depth is 2 micrometer so we are looking very small we want to create very small dimensions so we can create very small dimensions only if the light which we are using it as wavelength lambda it has the capability to resolve suppose this cap is 5 microns okay so if the light which will pass from this 5 micron edges it will also fall on the substrate at the 5 microns then only and then only it will react the photoresist in this portion okay so so if the light which we are using it will not get diffracted it will it will fall only the required reason then only we are able to manufacture the component with very small features okay and that small distance p that that in order to avoid if if we want to resolve if we want to see the two things like suppose we have two lines okay they are separated by distance b okay so if we are able to if we are able to distinguish this with our eyes then we can say yes they are different object but if if we go far away if we go if we go let's say 20 meters away then again if you try to see this this uh, these two small lines what you will see probably you will see some something like this some portion of first one is mingling with the second portion 
okay you cannot distinguish them separately if you see them from very far distance okay that is because of the resolving power of the our eyes similarly if you want to create very small features if you want to create this kind of small holes very close okay if the equipment or if our the machinery if our the optical system that its resolving power is not good then what will happen these two thing will get merged okay we are looking to make this object but if resolving power is not good what we will get we will get something like this okay this this would have happened if our optical system will not able to resolve these features okay so there is a relation which governs that and that relation is this okay so this relation is between the resolving distance and the wavelength of the light and this distance s s is nothing it is the distance between your wafer this is the wafer and this mask okay this is wafer so we have we so it is up to us whether we want to keep our mask this much distance or we can directly put the mask over the photo resist itself okay that is up to us so if we change this distance of <coughs> and if we change the distance of mask and the wafer then the resolving power the optic the resolving the resolving power or the resolution is given by this formula so this formula says that which the resolving distance resolved resolved distance okay so what we can say p is uh, we will increase if we increase distance s okay so if we increase the distance s then our b will also increase if b is increasing it means it means the resolution is decreasing high resolution means we can see small small objects distinguish okay so this distance was b okay if the, if this is decreasing if if our optical system can distinguish two very close objects it means it has high resolution and if it is not able to distinguish it means we can say it has poor resolution so we want to create small very fine features so we should be looking for uh, we should adjust this distance s in such a way so that our optical system can resolve these two features okay b our optical system can resolve these two things separately then only our then only the manufactured components will uh, will have desired feature otherwise we will get defected object something like this okay so correct answer is d but i have ex explained the significance of this relationship
okay so still if any of you have doubt please ask me or we shall move to the next problem any doubt okay if there is no doubt we will move to the next problem so this is the last problem of the day please read it and try to give the correct answer you can give your response in the chat box after that we will discuss it together Yes, I have got response from Silnimas. I am waiting for others. And this if you're uh, facing difficulty to understand the problem you can ask me okay uh, so let's start discussing the problem so in this problem it has been asked which of the following scheme is not used for wafer level bonding okay so what we are trying till now we are trying to manufacture a component which is which has uh, very small dimensions it is less than a micron so sometimes uh, it is not possible to manufacture the component in just by in one go or suppose just by one process let's say uh, we have some very difficult component something something like this or something very complex complex shape if, if we have and we want to manufacture this kind of miniature component all all the features are very small they are less than less than micron size so it is not possible sometime to manufacture this kind of component in the one go so for that what we go we go for the joining process it is very similar to what we do in the uh, micro manufacturing process we go for the welding we go for the uh, soldering so similarly here also sometimes we need to join the two materials at the and here the component is the wafer wafer which is made up of silicon okay so we want we have we want to go for the joining process and here uh, the techniques are different so here uh, we cannot do welding or any conventional techniques so here there are few processes which are listed down here so we will discuss them one by one 
फर्स्ट वन इज द फील्ड असिस्टेड बॉन्डिंग सो आई विल ड्रॉ द डायग्राम फील्ड असिस्टेड बॉन्डिंग दैट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एनोडिक बॉन्डिंग so here uh, suppose we want to join it is mainly used for to joining the silicon wafer with the glass okay okay we will draw with either color so suppose we have silicon wafer and we want to join a glass layer with the silicon wafer so glass wafer will protect the silicon wafer outlet let's say if we have circuit where we have very complex circuit and we want to protect it so what we do we we cover them we laminate it with the help of a glass layer so that it will not get it will not come into the uh, contact of the environmental uh, conditions so we just want to protect them that's why we are wanted to join a layer of glass on the silicon wafer it is just just a simplified diagram so we took this silicon wafer and we took the glass okay glass is nothing it is it has sodium and it has oxygen because soda lime glass we know and what what we do here if we apply some heat so basically we have a hot plate okay we have hot plate anode why we are calling it anode because we are going to provide a voltage across it okay so we we have connected we have connected anode with the battery same time we have increased the temperature of the anode and the negative terminal of battery we have connected with the the glass itself okay so now we have apply high voltage over here okay so because of this battery we are creating a high voltage difference between the hot plate hot plate anode and the top surface of the glass okay this is glass this is silicon and because of high potential difference and hot temperature if you see the glass i will exaggerate it if you see the glass what will happen inside it there will be any plus ion okay it will there will be an o2 minus ion they will be created okay because of high potential they will they will they will get dissociated into na plus and o2 minus ion and this sorry this na plus ion they will 
move towards upward because of this potential there is a electric field e it will get set up in this direction and because of this electric field n a plus ion will move to the top of the glass top surface of the glass o2 minus ion it will come to the bottom surface of the glass and we know here we have plain silicon surface okay and if there is a clean surface then it will react with oxygen and it will form a depletion region it will form a depletion region of silicon oxide SiO2 okay and during the formation of this kind of depletion region they will get attached or they will get joined they will get connected so now they have now if we remove the potential and we cool it down we will get combined material something like this so this is glass and this is say they can but in between in between there is a region of depletion mm -hmm. region and from there they will they will have gap from there they will have got jointed okay so this kind of bonding is called a field as a state bonding because we have applied a potential field we created an electric field and because of which moment of ion taken place and due to which joining process has taken place so yes this is the correct process which is used for the wafer level bonding scheme so there is a another process bonding by intermediate layer so sometimes suppose we have a substrate we have we have two separate uh, substrate they they we want to join them so like you have seen in the uh, soldering process we have to apply some outer layer material over here and with the help of outer layer material they we will join them together so here we will have two interfaces so substrate the substrate one is also combined with the inter layer material substrate 2 is also combined with the inter uh, inter layer material and finally th they will get joined so that is also a process which is used to for the wafer level wafer level bonding so that is also a correct process and there is another process that is called direct bonding by oxygen plasma okay so it is also a process which is used to for joining the uh, very uh, for joining the wafer materials so what happens there sometimes suppose uh, we have we have substrate one and we have another substrate let's let's say here okay and if we don't do anything and we try to join them together they will not get joined because of their uh, surface energy properties so uh, you know that uh, surface energy is responsible for the addition so you know if uh, if we have some surface like this and 
we have another material which is not wetting okay which is not wetting it is not adhering the surface then we cannot join them but suppose if this we have another material which is wetting the surface then they will then they can be joined by the adhesive bonding okay so that can be expressed in the terms of this contact angle okay so if the contact angle is uh, smaller then we have good wetting property and if contact angle is larger then we have poor wetting uh, wetting property and that this is the contact angle is the function of surface energy okay so suppose initially we have conditions like this where wetting process is not happening so this material cannot adhere to this material but if we do some changes in the any of this material so that one of them starts fitting another then there is a possibility of formation of bond between them okay so that is done by oxygen plasma so when suppose for example we are exposing this substrate to the oxygen plasma and we are changing its surface properties by changing its chemical uh, properties with the help of oxygen plasma and if we made if we changed the surface properties such a way so that now this green substrate will start wetting this material after exposing into the oxygen plasma then there is, we can bond them then we can stick them so details of this process uh, it has been explained in the video lectures you can go and watch the lectures what is happening in the it and what kind of bond is breaking uh, what how the surface properties are changing uh, how the dangling bonds are creating how free radicals are being made so those things you can go and watch in the lectures but the bottom line is that the, we are changing the surface property in such a way so that it starts wetting the another substrate so that is that change is brought by the help of oxygen plasma and therefore this mm, therefore the bonding between those two wafers can be possible after treating it by oxygen plasma so all three are correct all three are correct for this problem therefore the correct answer is d so uh, i have explained the solution so still if any of you have doubt you can ask me i will explain the fundamental concepts which is uh, for this problem which is required for this problem is it clear any of you have any doubt okay nishu anyway i am uploading the all the video lectures and the slides to the nptl website if you want uh, if you want to take screenshots you can take uh, problem 1 4 and 5 okay so this is the problem 1 please take it a screenshot quickly after problem 1 next one is problem number 4 please take the screenshot of problem number 4 
yes nishu please tell your hand is raised okay so uh, now okay problem number four okay now you take the screenshot of problem number four okay after this take the screenshot of problem number five also you can get the complete recording of this session as well as the pdf of the slides on the nptl website so this is all for the today but still if you have any doubts regarding any problem uh, you can ask me now otherwise um, we will end this session here and we will meet same time next tuesday with the some problem based on the video lectures of week 9 okay okay shall we end the session here okay thank you all for joining good night to all we will meet same time next week okay bye